audio through here. There. Can you hear? Me? But you can hear me. So oh. I'm just gonna have one slightly off. Am I supposed to hear someone from this too? I don't know. <laughs> I'm hoping. I can't hear anything from you here. Could you before? I could never know. I didn't. You didn't hear before? No. All oh, right. All right. Can you hear us, guys? Hi. Uh, James is tweeting at the same time. We're team working here. <laughs> <laughs> they can? <laughs> you can hear us. Yay. Hi. Oh, no. Peace. See. All right. Um, is there a way we can have the chat up here too? Or is oh, it like... Oh, yeah. That's a good idea. Uh, anything you guys are comfortable with, I don't mind. No, no, that's good. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, they can hear. We just they can't hear, hear ourselves. Hey, okay, uh, <laughs> that's a mate. It's okay, it's okay. Okay, go. All right, awesome. It. Hey, guys, we're back here. I am Harper Dude from Dream Bubble, and I'm here with John, one of the artists here at Media Molecule. Hey. Uh, recently, uh, we just ended a stream where Anton had to go do a panel, and I'm here with John, about to do an um, awesome interview here with Media Molecule. Um, about dreams. So here we go, John. Are you ready? I'm um, hot. Uh, hit me. Let's do this. Okay. <laughs> we all get different questions. Reading from the list. Uh, in dreams, will there be lip syncing? So I, I think we showed it a little bit in when we were um, streaming before. There's definitely lip syncing on the imps. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you speak uh, into the microphone, it picks it up and changes the mouth expressions. Oh. So definitely that. Uh, maybe that gets used elsewhere but at the moment it's only on the imp but yeah that's 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 that awesome the next question is will there be transparent objects with ref reflections for windows and ice and etc transparent uh, at the moment there isn't uh, but the way that our engine works we kind of use it to be more expressive um, so if I was trying to hint at uh, something made of glass. I still think you can do that with our tools mm -hmm. because it's you're using the paint strokes in such a way uh, to hint at the forms rather than using like fancy kind of shaders to make stuff look transparent. So no, currently not. Uh, but w we have lots of clever people, so you never know. But at the moment, a lot no. of clever people. <laughs> Everyone, me and Molecule is talented. They have their own unique personality. They make every game they make flourish. That's pretty awesome. Uh, will objects, color, properties changing be something that can be animated? Like a uh, blue opaque ball gradually becoming red and transparent? That's a really good question. So at the moment, yes, you can tint an object any color. You can, you can change some of its properties. You can hue cycle it. I don't see why you couldn't choose to do that and it remember and cycle through. That, uh, I don't think you can do that at the moment, mm -hmm. but I know we are working in the background on, on a lot of our logic system stuff, which we're not showing at the moment, but um, so there's no reason why I don't think you could do that. I think that's definitely possible. Awesome. Uh, will there be cloth simulation, like a scar for like um, journey with the whole um, the uniform, like you're walking in the desert and it's like so cloth in the wind? So if you see the, um, uh, I don't know if you saw when I was placing the these these um, pieces of grass down, but they're actually moving in the wind. Yeah. And they've actually there's gustiness. Uh, it's the same same te uh, technology that's the, the doing the water, the water simulation. Mm -hmm. um, there's no reason why you couldn't have that react in such a way to make it look like cloth. Will there be a precise cloth simulation? At the moment, no. But there's no reason you couldn't be creative with our using the splines for the painting to make it look like cloth. Awesome. Uh, will, you, will you be able to make simulation for hair and feathers? Well, I think you do like that. Exactly yeah, I can just mention. Thing. So that, yeah, again, it's it's a more expressive way, more impressionist way of doing it. It's not necessarily hyper real, but you still you'd still get great secondary movement because if you grab one of those uh, grass clusters and move it around, it will react. So you can imagine having that on a character, it will react. So. That's yeah. awesome. Oh, uh, okay. Well, with a little bit water simulation, we have this painting here. Yeah, That's yeah, kind exactly. of like Again, the water it's, simulation. it's not like fluid simulation. It's not fluid dynamics, but it still looks like water. So. Yeah. Uh, will there be diverse skyboxes? Great, can, great um, question. Yeah. Can there be um, loose, tight, or realistic? Yeah. So at the moment, uh, it's a great question. Uh, yes. You can change the skybox to be lots of different colors. They're made out of different um, brush st strokes the size of them you can change, and the analogy that we're using to change those is exactly the same um, tools as I showed when I was tinting stuff. Mm -hmm. So you'd be able to look up at the sky and hue cycle it, or you could make it uh, tint it a certain color. Um, so yeah, there's gonna be loads to play with there. And actually, 
the pretty amazing technology that goes into the sky actually lights your scene uh, from the top and the bottom. So as you change your color of the sky, it, it, it will, if you make it red, it will actually cast a red color onto all the stuff. Wow. So the, the sky is a really important part of dreams because it has such an impact. So yeah, we've, we've, we've put lots of effort into making that look really, really good. So much detail. I can already see in the game and the way you talk about the game, so much detail is already put into it. Like yeah. every fine piece of, it's a really amazing. Um, will, the, will you guys have traditional animation alternatives rather than automatic so it's more strict like a majority of gameplay in other games? Traditional animation alternatives rather than automatic. Yes. Okay. So, so we like do templates. have some automatic stuff. Yeah. Uh, like w when you see when you possess the uh, the character and walk around. Mm -hmm. But yes, you can animate anything in the game, and the animation takes as long as it takes to animate it. So I can pick up that rock, move it around with the record button, let go of it, and it it will then do that animation. So you can record s uh, scenic stuff. You can record other character animation, yes, is the very simple answer. Or you can possess a character, hit record, and act out like a, a, a little walk cycle, or you know he's hiding, so you're you're performing something, and have that playback. So you can you can do it with any inanimate object or a character. That's really cool. Um, well, at what point did dreams become dreams? Was it as you built then you decided what to do with it? Because I know you guys, um, after Olympic Planet 2, you guys worked on Tearaway and Dreams at the same time at early yeah. stages. So how did it become what it became today? It's interesting because uh, Little Big Planet, kind of the concept of that was came very early. Uh, and it, the, it, was the, the, it was a platformer and the tools served that. And Dreams was a bit more of an interesting proposition because it's almost the other way around which is we made we try to make amazing tools and then see what we could make with it um, which is a really interesting way of it's the focus is on that and and it also encourages play and creativity for us not just for you guys but for us so we're working on the content at the moment um, that's going to be exciting to talk about in the kind of coming <laughs> months. Um, but yeah, I think the process has been very organic, which has been really exciting. That's really cool. I love how like, when you progress, you come up with new things along the way, scrap things, add new things, and like it's different every time we see it. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, is there much difference in control between the standard controller and the move controller when it comes to sculpture rank? Now we did see different interfaces, but yes. they're placeholders. We so talk more um, about that. Assembly is pretty much identical. I mean, I, you saw me picking up the, the uh, dual shock and grabbing uh, objects and, and stamping them down, moving around. It's the same as the moves. I mean, the moves, you have twice as many controllers, right? So you, you do have, you can manipulate things faster, um, but it's just as good, really, I think, to be able to. To, to sculpt stuff with the dual shock and I've made characters with the dual shock um, I've made sculptures in general with the dual shock so they're different experiences um, but I would say one is not necessarily better than the other they're, they're different it, that's really cool um, how complex will the music sound effect creation tool be now you guys didn't really discuss uh, yeah. this much yet um, I don't know how much you can reveal about it's it it's a now. great question um, yeah. so we are currently working on that as we speak uh, uh, there's a team of people working on that and it's incredibly exciting. <laughs> uh, I've used it myself to make some, uh, some s soundscapes, some music. Um, it's going to be great. It's the same ethos really as the art tool. It's rather than... Um, so I'm not going to say too much because I'd rather show rather than tell. Surprises are better, but, yes. But it's the same ethos of playing and being trying to th make it as creative as possible rather than tweaking things, moving sliders. It's more about expressing and we're trying to embrace that. So that's quite a nebulous answer, I realize. Those tools are going to be there and we're going to talk about them soon yeah. um, and you guys are going to love it. It sounds very unique. It sounds yeah, very yeah. me and my cool. Oh, we have time for only one more question. Pick, okay. Pick uh, a good one. Let's <laughs> pick a good one. <laughs> uh, pressure, 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 pressure. Okay, it's two left. Oh, there's two more left anyways. Can you do those two like really quickly? All right, thank you so much. Um, will there be a variety of walking patterns or walking designer included for characters? So yes. like walking templates so or moment, templates? Uh, as, soon as, you as soon as you possess a character, you can start walking with it. 
Uh, yes, you can change stride length. There's a thing called sassiness, which makes the hips wobble a bit more. Uh, yeah, that you can modify lots of things on the on the animation tool rather than it just being default. And importantly, how you pose the character defines the gait of the character and how it actually moves. So you can take the same character, five people can pose it differently and it will walk differently. It knows from that initial pose how to m make that character walk. Okay. So yeah. Uh, one more question here. Um, Last one. Kind of a question, I guess. Uh, can we have background characters like extras in a movie that would go about their business, etc., walking, talking? So uh, of basically, yeah. Uh, yeah. So different cast members, yes. So it goes back to that question I answered earlier. You could have extras in your scene which you're animating. Yes, is the answer to that. Yep. All right, guys. That actually wraps up our live stream. John, thank you once again for having me here, dude. You're amazing, and everyone here, Melanie Michael. Thank you so much. Oh, thank, thank you for you. showing me this beauty right here. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, this dream. It's like it should be in an art gallery right now. Oh, thank you very <laughs> much. Cheers, guys. Uh, cheers, guys. See you later. Bye, guys. Bye. Okay, and oh yeah, Jenny, you can you touch that? <laughs> I'm done. <laughs>